For the first time, the special counsel's office says it has data from Donald Trump's cell phone, and they plan to show how Trump used his phone in the days and weeks after the election, including on January 6th. In a court filing last night previewing expert testimony that prosecutors plan to bring to the case, Jack Smith says he plans to call to the stand an expert who extracted and reviewed data from Trump's phone and the phone of another individual who is currently ident unidentified. Special counsel says that the expert, quote, will testify that he or she analyzed data on the defendant's phone and on individual one's phone, including analyzing images found on the phones and websites visited. The expert also, quote, determined the usage of these phones throughout the post-election period, including on and around January the 6th, 2021. The expert even, quote, identified the periods of time during which the defendant's phone was unlocked and the Twitter application was open on January the 6th. What Donald Trump said and did on January 6th, who he talked to, what he himself posted to Twitter are some of the biggest outstanding questions around the insurrection. In fact, the work of the January 6th Select Committee often turned up more questions than answers. On the screen is the presidential call log from January 6th. As you can see, there's no official record of President Trump receiving or placing a call between 11.06 and 6.54 p.m. Because the presidential call log is empty, we do not yet know precisely which senators President Trump was calling. But we do know from Rudy Giuliani's phone records that President Trump also called him at 1.39, after he had been told that the riot was underway at the Capitol. So are you aware of any phone call by the President of the United States to the Secretary of Defense that day? Not that I'm aware of, no. Are you aware of any phone call by the President of the United States to the Attorney General of the United States that day? No. Are you aware of any phone call by the President of the United States to the Secretary of Homeland Security that day? I, I'm not aware of that, no. Did you speak to President Trump on his private cell phone on either January 5th or January 6th? Uh, once again, on advice of counsel, I will assert my Fifth Amendment right to respectfully decline to answer your question. All right, that's where we begin uh, this hour with national investigative reporter for The Washington Post, Carol Lenig, former top official at the Department of Justice, Andrew Weissman, and the editor-at-large for The Bulwark, Charlie Sykes. Welcome to all of you. Thank you for uh, being with us. Carol, it's not that we didn't know in broad strokes what Donald Trump was up to on January 6th, but this introduces a level of granularity. Um, tell me what you, what you understand about this and what, uh, what it helps us understand and what it helps us determine. You know, I think you could read this two ways, Ali. One is, oh, my goodness, that Jack Smith sure is going to the ends of the earth to make sure he has all the records that he needs to explain what happened on the days before January 6th and the actual day, what was in the president's hand, mind, and what he was, uh, what kind of communications he was engaging in. On the other hand, you could see it as good old-fashioned uh, investigations by a prosecutor and FBI agents, getting the baseline material to tell the story of what Donald Trump did, who he talked to. And I think it'll probably prove true in this trial that what Jack Smith is going to present from these phone records is basically corroboration. Here's who Donald Trump called after he found out there was a, a riot in full-blown force on the Capitol lawn and rushing up the stairs and breaching the halls of Congress. Here's what Donald Trump tweeted when he knew that Vice President Pence was on this location and possibly some new revelations. Who did he call right before? Who did he call right after? This, I think, is, is like the, the bread and butter of being a federal investigator and prosecutor. You tell the story and you also corroborate it with something that's incontrovertible. And let's talk to a guy who's uh, been that federal prosecutor, Andrew Weissman. Tell me about uh, about this. Uh, what is it meant to establish? Um, and is it is it meant to answer questions that we don't know, or is it meant to underscore suppositions that Jack Smith already has made? Well, we don't know the answer to that yet, but I have to say Carol has it exactly right. Um, so the first thing that you use this for is the same way you used to use telephone records, um, just sort of, you know, from when you used rotary phones and you got call records just to place, to create a timeline of exactly what happened when. 
Um, and you can be sure that in both on January 6th and the days leading up to it and the days after, the prosecution is going to want to present to a jury very precise details about exactly what happened. And then on the speculative part, to which Carol started alluding to, it could be that we learn who he spoke to. We could see images on that phone, for instance, of his seeing what was happening in the Capitol, because there's a reference in the Smith filing that was made to Judge Chutkin that they captured websites and images from that phone. There also could be deletions from that phone, and there could be evidence with respect to what is it that Donald Trump or his allies did not want the jury to see. So it remains to be seen exactly um, how valuable that evidence is, but at a pure baseline, it is going to be something that is used to give hard evidence to create a firm timeline that you then can put all the other pieces, the witness testimony, um, into and um, fit it into that particular um, uh, presentation that the prosecution is going to make to the jury. Charlie Sykes, uh, obviously this may not matter to, to the people who are deliberating in this trial, but it matters to everybody else. Donald Trump isn't is it, he doesn't broadly dispute some of the things that he does. He says, I didn't incite a riot. I didn't incite an insurrection. I didn't, I didn't say the things you think I said. Uh, I don't know. Maybe, the, maybe the, the law and the courts will settle that matter once and for all. But for Donald Trump, uh, his defense is always that somebody misunderstood him or misconstrued him. Well, and there's also the the, the emerging argument. Uh, yeah, you know, um, I said all those things because I thought the election was being stolen. And the people who uh, attacked the Capitol are in fact heroes. Uh, he's made it very clear that he intends to embrace them. He's recorded songs with them. Who will probably pardon many of them on the, on the first day. But uh, what I think we're being reminded of is that uh, Jack Smith knows a lot more than we think he necessarily knows. And we're going to get to the question of what did Donald Trump know? When did he know it? Who did he call? Um, what was he doing during all of those hours? Now, I don't think we're going to be shocked to find out what happened, but this jury is going to get a much clearer picture of that day and what Donald Trump was doing and thinking and not doing than we've seen so far. And that's interesting because I think, you know, we've gone along, you know, we, we've seen a lot, we've read a lot, we went through the January 6th hearings, but that jury is going to have a much more complete uh, picture than any of us so far, assuming that this trial goes ahead as we expect that it will. Andrew Weissman, I'm really, I, I'm appreciative that you uh, made a reference to rotary phone, phones. It made me feel very, very comfortable uh, in my age. Here's a, a CBS News reporting that says John Bolton, the former national security advisor in the Trump administration, told CBS News on Tuesday he had heard the former president, Donald Trump, use the phrase burner phones in several discussions, and the former president knew what it meant. Like, I don't know, these guys are pretty hip. I, I'm, I'm, not clear on exactly where you'd get a burner phone if you need one. I kind of know what they are. Uh, talk to me about this, this introduction of this concept of there maybe having been burner phones. Well, this is something that we were aware of when I worked for special counsel Mueller. Uh, Liz Cheney in her new book makes reference to this. And now we're talking about information from a personal phone. Um, all of this is... Um, uh, something that is the irony is is quite deep for anyone who followed the 2016 election, um, where Donald Trump was daily criticizing uh, Hillary Clinton, his rival, for having um, used a server that was outside of the State Department and having this information at home as opposed to on a government system. But it has widely been known for a long time that Donald Trump and many other people within the White House, it's been reported, used non-government uh, phones or applications like Signal to communicate. That is not proper for people in uh, the um, uh, in government, in the executive branch, at the Department of Justice. Um, particularly if you are a presidential appointee, where you have to maintain all presidential records. So one of the ironies here is that you have somebody who, you know, ran on a platform of denigrating that kind of conduct, and now it's almost a commonplace 
that you learn about people in the White House under Donald Trump, including Donald Trump, using communication styles that were deliberately avoiding um, the Presidential Records Act and um, maintaining a record of exactly what was happening.